Let's review the normal soft tissues within the neck. And uh, just an FYI, this is a different patient compared to the one that you have uh, during the anatomy lab. Uh, but we'll show the same things, obviously. Uh, so let's start from the top. Let's scroll down. And let's start with the glands. So the first one and the largest one is the parotid gland. And you can see that the parotid gland in this patient is uh, very lobulated, which is normal, but it has uh, quite a bit of an, bit of an extent here anteriorly uh, over the uh, masseter muscle. But you can tell how the uh, enhancement pattern, because this is a, a CT enhanced, uh, C, <laughs> this is a contrast enhanced CT scan, and uh, it's different from the muscle and it's more lobulated. And it's located mostly posterior to the masseter muscle. Next is the submandibular gland, and so here is obviously the mandible, so submandibular should be below the mandible. And here it is, the left and the right submandibular gland. And you can see the extent of it in this one as it uh, extends here behind the mylohyoid muscle into the floor of the mouth uh, along the expected course of the duct for the submandibular gland, which is going to empty in the floor of the mouth. While we're down here, we can also take a look at the sublingual glands. And so here they are, uh, very well enhancing in this patient, uh, the left and the right sublingual glands. Next, let's look at the different portions of the uh, pharynx and the larynx. And so you can see that well on the sagittal view. So uh, to get oriented, this is the nasal cavity. Uh, it's above the hard palate here of the maxilla and uh, anything posterior to this back here is the nasopharynx okay so this is all air coming down right breathing through your nose as you get below the hard palate you enter the oropharynx and oral, oral cavity and so the oral cavity is going to be in the front we see the tongue here and uh, we have the hard palate and the soft palate and uh, posterior to the uh, oral cavity is the oropharynx. Okay, so just a continuation down from the nasopharynx. Now, as you get below the epiglottis, here's the epiglottis. Uh, you enter, uh, you exit the uh, oropharynx, and you enter either the larynx or the hypopharynx. The larynx is going to be in the front, and uh, that's obviously where the uh, inspired and exhaled gas is going to go up and down and when you swallow and the epiglottis closes uh, you're going to force water and food down the hypopharynx which is in the, is in the back continuing down uh, in this potential space here which is the hypopharynx the post cricoid region the posterior wall of the hypopharynx uh, located here behind the cricoid cartilage and so this is uh, difficult to see here. You can see a little bit of the enhancing mucosa here. Uh, but it's difficult to appreciate the space because it's not filled with fluid uh, or with food. That's going to, of course, continue down into uh, the uh, cervical portion of the esophagus. Uh, anteriorly, uh, we're going to be in the f uh, larynx, like I said. First is the supraglottic larynx. And then we're going to enter the uh, glottic larynx, which is where the uh, true vocal folds are. And it's at this level right here. As we go below that, we enter the um, uh, subglottic larynx. And shortly after that, we're in the trachea. And so here's the trachea. And depending on the calcification of the tracheal rings we can uh, we can see them here anteriorly uh, this little thin here this patient is uh, fairly young and doesn't have very much calcification there are supporting structures anteriorly cartilages and bones and uh, here in the sagittal view you can lay them out we have the hyoid bone uh, up top which is where all the muscles with the name hyoid in it attach. Uh, so geniohyoid and uh, mylohyoid, for example, coming uh, uh, from anteriorly and superiorly, uh, forming kind of the inferior border here at the floor of the mouth. Um, so this is the hyoid bone, front to back, 
on each side. Uh, anterior or uh, on the axial view, you can see it here. Hyoid bone extending up back here. Okay. As you continue down, you're going to run into the thyroid cartilage. Right aspect of it and the left aspect of it. So let's take a look at that on the sagittal. Here is the thyroid cartilage. And posterior to the thyroid cartilage, you're going to have the cricoid cartilage. And so here's the major cricoid cartilage. And it's going to have smaller cartilages attached to it, like the erythenoids, for example, here. But uh, just want you to identify the larger cricoid cartilage here in the back. Uh, we pointed out the esophagus, which was a continuation of the uh, hypopharynx. So again, hypopharynx coming down, hypopharynx behind the cricoid here, and as you continue down, it enters into the esophagus. And here's the esophagus, which you guys have seen before, partially gas-filled here. Let's do the vasculature while we're down here. So here's the aortic arch. Coming up, we have the left subclavian, left common, and brachiocephalic. Let's follow it on one side. So let's go on the right side. Brachiocephalic splits in the subclavian and the common carotid. The common carotid artery continues up and it's going to bifurcate into an external and an internal carotid artery. You can see the external is going to give off a bunch of branches. If we go back down, the internal usually doesn't have any branches within the neck. Alright, the vertebral arteries again reviewing from prior sessions. Coming back down to the bifurcation here of the brachiocephalic, common, subclavian, subclavian continuing out, giving off the vertebral artery here on the right side. Entering the foramen transversarium, being protected, continuing up in the neck, swinging out here at the level of C1, continuing around, piercing the dura, going intracranially. Lastly are the veins, the internal jugular vein is formed uh, superiorly here at the end of the sigmoid sinus, uh, the jugular bulb, and then continuing inferiorly on both sides here filled with contrast down in the neck to join the subclavian vein to form the right brachiocephalic vein. Let's finish it up with the rest of the structures here. The strap muscles are a complex of several muscles uh, located here uh, around the visceral space which includes the thyroid glands and here anteriorly are the strap muscles running up and down the neck. Sternocleidomastoid runs laterally continuing up from the mastoid. Here's the origination of the muscle. Continuing down, connecting to the clavicle and to the sternum. Sternum right there. And to the clavicle right there. The last few structures are the platysma which is this very thin, long muscle running along the lateral aspect of the neck. Here it is, thin muscle on the right side. Here it is on the left side. We talked about the myelohyoid before, but let's take a look at it on the uh, coronal view. Because it's, it's an important muscle. It forms the sling, basically, of the floor of the mouth. Uh, or the inferior extent of the floor of the mouth. So here on the coronal we have the patient's tongue, we have the root of the tongue uh, down in the uh, sublingual space here, and then the mylohyoid uh, runs here from the mylohyoid ridge down inferiorly attaching uh, to the hyoid bone right here, and then continuing up to the mylohyoid ridge. And so that is the mylohyoid muscle. Lastly, the styloid process It's going to be in the region of the mastoid bone. So let's go find that mastoid bone here. 
continuing down and the styler process here on the left side it's right here on the right side it's right here fairly short and not very well ossified in this patient and here you can see it on the coronal plane styloid process partially calcified styloid process on the left side partially calcified